welcome to my channel this is Chirag Goyal so today I'm gonna talk about the SQL Server Polybase feature so I'm making this video because I have got many requests about Polybase feature how we can use this and what's the benefit of this one uh, SQL Server launched this feature in 2016 and uh, with SQL Server 2016 version and it has improved a lot after that okay who am I? I am Chirag, who is a software professional working in IT from past 17 years, have a great leadership experience and worked with a lot of IT technologies, have and below are some of my certifications. I'm a Azure Solution Architect Expert certified, AWS Solution Architect certified, and a lot of other certifications I have. Okay, let's get to the topic. I will try to keep this video short. Okay. Uh, let's start with the basics of Polybase. So what is Polybase? Polybase enables SQL Server instance to query data with T-SQL directly from different sources like SQL Server, Oracle, or other sources you can name it. Um, so that's what it provides you to query other sources of data. So what is the key use case for this one? It's basically used to basically uh, not change the original location of the source. So suppose you have a file out there um, on the storage or somewhere else and you want to read it. Normally what happens with the traditional methods, you do the ETL operations, you read that file and you basically import that data into your uh, curated zone or basically uh, in the staging area. And then you finally massage that data and then put that into data marts. In this case, basically you can, or user can directly read that data from the source location. Suppose a file is sitting in the your blob storage. User can use the Polybase feature and read that file. We're gonna walk through that specific example in this one so that you can, you know, clarity can be given in this example. So uh, last point which I have over here is it enables you to query data like any other tables in SQL Server. So basically it makes you feel like, you know, uh, you are querying another table within the SQL Server. You're not querying the uh, external source out there. So that's how uh, it make it like, you know, adapt for the user. So let's get started. So what is the very first step to start using the Polybase? So very first step to start with the Polybase is to install the Polybase feature with the SQL Server. So when you install the SQL Server, it gives you different option. There is another option starting SQL Server 2016, which says Polybase query service for external data. So you have to check that so that it can install the Polybase services. So once you do that, once the installation completes, then very first step you do on the SQL Server is you basically enable Hadoop connectivity. So basically, if I need to go to the SQL Server, I need to enable the Hadoop connectivity. So that's what I need to do. I have all in this example, what I'm going to do is I am going to basically put a file into the blob storage and that CSV file, which I'm going to put in the blob storage, I'm going to read or attach that as an external table into SQL Server. That's what we are doing, doing uh, using a Polybase feature. So right now what I did is I created a customer.csv file which has these values out here. I pasted a screenshot over here and I created a blob storage in my subscription in the cloud, which is a test subscription. I'm going to delete that container once I'm done with this scenario and example. And that's where I uploaded the CSV file. Once I uploaded the CSV file, next step is to create the master key. So we have to create the master key. So key part is, suppose you are creating a master key, you have to basically be in the same database. So what I did is I created an admin database out there on the SQL Server, and I'm connected to that one. So once I'm connected to that uh, admin database, I need to run that, those statements against that one. So once I'm done with the master key creation, I need to create a database scope credential. So what happens here is there are two ways to create a credential. So if you have worked with the Azure blob storage, what happens? It provides you different 
method of connectivity. One is with the key and secret value. Second is with the shared access signature. So the way you connect with the blob storage is you create a database cop credential using the shared access signature. I obfuscated the secret over here. The reason being uh, it's it can uh, cause uh, um, my storage account to be compromised. So I basically hide the secret over here, but this is the syntax which you have to use. You can go to your blob storage out there and copy the secret from there. And there is this is another method where it uses a key and the secret out there. So there are two different methods methods to access the blob storage one is with using the key and the secret second is using the shared access signature in this scenario when i use the key and the secret it don't work when i use a shared access signature it works so i pasted both the command here for your reference so you can use the second one which works once i'm done with that one what happens i created a credential now I have to attach or create my external data source. So what I did is I created an external data source named blob CSV2 and provided my location. First part, if you look at this one is that's my container name and this is my storage account name. And then I have to provide my credential which we created in the last step. So if I go in here, I created a credential using HTTPS test storage cg .blob .car -windows .net. It helps SQL Server to identify the file type which we are going to read. So if you have some different file format, you have to create your file format object accordingly. Here I'm using a CSV file as I shown earlier. So that's what I'm specifying. My file type, delimited text, and format options are terminator is comma, string delimiter is this one and first row starts from the second. So um, it can give you the error um, which I got during my example, which Microsoft don't tell in their documentation. So it can give you the error like in correct syntax near external. So this is what I ran into. So what I'm doing here basically, I'm providing you my working example i'm providing you with the errors which i encountered and it will be good learning from you guys so if you get this same error so what do you need to do in in order to pass through that one so you need to run this sp configure statement where you are basically enabling polybase and uh, reconfiguring that uh, value so once you do that you will be able to create the external file format. Otherwise, it's going to give you this error. So once you create the file format, now next step comes to the creating the external table. So what I did, I created external table customer table one, and I provided the three columns which I created in that CSV and provided the location. Data source is basically the credential which we created. File format is the one which we created in the previous step. So once we create that thing, we can query the table using simple SQL statements and it will feel to the end users like they are using the SQL server tables. So it won't feel them. They are connected with the external source out there. They are not importing it. They are basically directly making a connection to that source and they're reading directly out there. So if I have to show you in the SQL server very quick, I can go in here, right here are my external tables. External customer table one is the one which we created. If I select top 100,000 rows, so I just have like four rows out there. So you can see right here, I have uh, all the things listed what I have in the CSV. If I have to show you the CSV, this is where I save the CSV. And if I open that CSV, in the notepad, you can see this is what I have as a source data. So thank you. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, this concludes my Polybase uh, example and video. Hopefully it was helpful to you. Again, I will share more videos in coming days. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a great day.